Well, hello, that's me again. Today is August 16th. It is, thank God, it's Friday. And um, boy, we have so much <laughs> happening all over the place that I don't know even where to start. And I missed, usually people get used to the fact that I'm doing a video each other day. Uh, but obviously I was very busy yesterday, so I couldn't do anything about it. And good for me and for you too, because we can get now the clearer picture. And uh, we will start with what even... Uh, you know, obviously we'll start with Kursk and, uh, well, what was expected is happening now and there was no other way and uh, the first expectation was that essentially they will be sucked in because it was planned by people who do not understand what modern operations are and they will be sucked in into this initial and it's always surprise always tactical surprise is always present no matter who attacks you or other side so once it wears off it will end up as it is ending up now with the total annihilation of uh, every single uh, basically significant force or group which were streaming through um, the border of uh, Russia into Kursk uh, region and many people do not understand why this figure why did it go cannot go any further than uh, uh about 10 kilometers deep into the territory very simple because a Russian army was deployed there at around between 11 to 13 kilometers where uh, and essentially what they happened they uh well they deployed so to speak in what is called their uh, cover zone or security zone if we follow their uh, uh American uh terminology which also works so and then once they got you know run into this wall and guess what so now it's all dispersed they try to get into all kinds of different places including Belgorod uh, Oblast for example but here is the problem many people do not uh, didn't understand Russia has enough forces there without any reserve uh, reserve to do deal with them and the only reason they actually uh, transferred the uh, parts elements of Pitnashka uh, brigade, uh, brigade and obviously elements of Ahmad Brigade because they are specialists of dealing with all kinds of what is called diversionary recon groups and this is essentially what it degenerated to and even when you have Wall Street Journal you know what admitting this you know so and you cannot yeah, it is what it is. As Ukraine invades Russia, Kyiv's troops are in trouble on the Eastern Front. And uh, remarkably, it's written by, uh, evidently, the guy, well, Jan Lovett, I don't know who he is, and uh, no, normal people usually do not work in the mainstream media, but uh, Nikita Nikolaenko, I assume he has a Ukrainian name, so, and it was pub published yesterday, and they actually admitted that Ukrainian soldiers are overmatched in some areas, and deployment in the trenches can stretch for months. Not in Kursk area because uh, if you go out there and take a look at what is happening uh, and there's plenty of videos of what is happening there is basically what was expected complete annihilation it's a mayhem and actually just for you to uh, those people who think that uh, you know uh, nothing is happening in Sumy uh, uh, Oblast or region. Oh, it is happening, all right. The Sumy now, the city has the lights turned off, the sewer turned off, there are all those locations, including the foreign mercenaries and including the uh, staff of some NATO officers who conducted this on the tactical level, this operation. They have been bombed into submission because, you know, so, and uh, it's the uh, result is inevitable. Uh, Sumy Oblast, which used to be Ukrainian, uh, probably will become part of Russian territory. So it, it, that's what they wanted. And if, even when Wall Street uh, Journal admits this, this tells you something. And there is another thing, of course, in terms of even Washington Post, you know. So Washington Post and we know the guys uh, completely uh, confabulate those things. But here it is, you see, they write, you know, about that, you know, uh, um, POWs, 
And I like uh, this thing. First, the captured soldiers, they talk about uh, some kind of 100 soldiers uh, uh, from uh, 488 <laughs> guards motorized rifle regiment. And Ahmad unit, the official says, speaking on the condition of anonymity, of course, because of the sensitivity of the subject, a video provided by the official showed dozens of soldiers lying in line face down in an open field. Their faces and battle insignia were not visible. The Washington Post could not independently verify the footage so yeah it's we know who those POWs quote unquote were obviously Ahmad already uh, and Abti Aludin have completely debunked this BS and it's all propaganda you can sense their London you know so to speak uh, production values there because we know even Mr. Lavrov already spoke about this that they have uh, you know set up all those uh, you know studios essentially and those guys well yeah you don't show POWs like this you can go uh, on the internet any minute and look up how Russians show the POWs. Those guys do not lay down simply. Once they are, you know, approached by the appropriate person, a military person, they are raised on the, from the ground. They are show with the, the hands up. They call their name. They are identif they identify themselves and you already know what unit they are from. But this is obviously all baloney and it's all as always fake media videos but what what can i say and uh, washington post continues also with this um well how to put it politely so you say <clears throat> um, they um they talk about the uh, allegedly jubilance of support in kursk the fighting in belgorod has been fierce yes they trying to uh you know uh, penetrate all those uh, uh um uh, groups uh, into you know uh, all kinds of the areas from uh, obviously Belgorod to they probably gonna be trying to do this in Bransk and uh, they uh, write about the Russian troops in Belgorod appeared prepared for their arrival the soldier said in con contrast to the quick advances Ukrainians made in through Kursk the, those advances we have to understand they run the DRG which is of course the again uh, diversionary recon group they run into some village shoot civilians as uh, you know they usually do uh make photos sh wave the flag and run away this is how they you know they fight and this is they do it for the pr reasons and uh, we already know if anybody uh, has to understand what is going on uh there these are the uh ukrainian troops you can find this video it's despicable they are basically torture essentially the uh, uh, 74 year old man he has appeared to be have uh, suffering a little bit from dementia he got lost and he d didn't see uh, on the left eye so they as you can see yourself they put on the ss uh, helmets <clears throat> and talk about russian russian swine vodka and all that these are uh, ukrainian troops which as we know everybody tells us that there are no nazis there well in fact it is nazis and united states and combined with supports nazi regime there but but as you can see yourself this is what they do and well uh, the, uh, the relatives of this old man they are trying to find him but uh, there, there is sadly one suspicion that actually the uh, man probably has been killed and he was absolutely lost and I, I won't call it shell-shocked he was simply lost because he is an old guy this is what they do they torture and kill civilians the cases of rape is are already well documented so and but here is the other thing they thought and this was well again uh, at this stage as number of russian professionals joke that uh, when this operation will be you know taught so to speak in the academy of general staff people will have difficulty understanding what was the conception and what was this all about and let me tell you everybody knows what was this all about it was about showing npr and selling it into the well biden administration which is militarily incompetent and to you know try to provide for uh, support of ukrainian regime but but here is what is funny thing uh, this uh, uh, resource, which allegedly Russia was supposed to uh, uh, transfer to uh, Kursk and whatever, you know, so uh, they went actually not there. <laughs> they 
went into the Pokrovsk axis and as you can see yourself the speed and the way things happening what they call it Eastern Front whatever they call it uh, in the Western media you can uh, take a look at some things which are well rather well astonishing that actually the speed the tempo of operations increased in those areas and the Russians now taking these things as you can see yourself this is the map of Taretsk oh you can see yourself Taretsk uh, uh, area uh, they are and this is already actually uh, the um, map which doesn't reflect the actual situation but I will show you what is happening right now as you can see yourself if you look attentively at even the scale of those arrows you will see yourself the advances are two four kilometers and things of this nature so now from Marat Hyrulian this is what is happening now today in Taretsk Russians are already deep in Taretsk and as you can see yourself uh, Taretsk uh, well is being mopped up and they try to offer you know some kind of resistance there but uh, then again uh, suddenly they have no reserves uh, of course which ones are being poured now under the Russian incredible fire power in a Kursk region and somewhere along the border including like Belgorod they tried those groups they get into you know into uh, territory for one kilometer that they immediately repelled annihilated and if just <clears throat> uh, I will remind you something just another demonstration <clears throat> of what is going on there you probably uh, remember this guy right uh, he was I, I will use him constantly that tells you practically level the level of the British military so and he's talking about a British made tanks about this with Putin's conscripts aside that was uh, you know uh, more than one year ago and he's talking about as a former tank commander I know the challenger too vastly out much matches what's left on Russian armor well well let's start with what we observe in terms of challenger 2 actually yeah most of what is the participating uh, was participating in this curse operation is of the western origin and again it was conceived and uh planned by people from London who obviously cannot plan even the you know uh, moving loan in front of my house but yeah that's the, the level in their um, military competence and operational competence levels are a joke really and Pentagon of course and that is why what they were pouring into the into course complex was primarily of the Western origin and here is the photographs you can find this video easily this is one of the challengers in Kursk as you can see yourself they try to move around their forests because once they are in the open it's over they literally cannot move in the open so here's a challenger and here's the same challenger which hides tries to hide in forest and that's what it is uh, in uh, about minute later uh, well evidently it's the visit from the Lancet uh, loitering munition and as you can see yourself the whole thing went kaboom including its ammo storage which tells you that well yeah it's not that good and then of course we have the second challenger which encountered good old 125 millimeter uh, around from <clears throat> which was created for T-72s but it's also used by T-90s uh, this is so much for this Vaunted Chobom armor and this one has been shot from a Russian uh, Russian tank defeated it this challenger and what can I say evidently it doesn't you know perform as it was supposed to perform but we already know this issue don't we that actually practically everything what is happening there it doesn't perform as expected because it's all about you know basically thumping your own chest and saying that you are the best in the world no you are not and this is simple as that when even the older Russian equipment like it was the case with one of the Abrams <clears throat> which was you know basically well had his uh, burned by the single shot from T-72B it's what can I say there you go there everything you need to know about it and then we have obviously the uh, number of uh, 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 losses these are from yesterday as you can see yourself so we have uh, evidently what you have to understand they beginning to move looks like the reports about Kursk into separate category but even what we have right now it's again people probably got desensitized by all this but you have to keep in mind just 
keep in mind try to you know let it sink uh, for you that in a day in a 24 or uh, uh, four hour period what have been confirmed there are very many which are not confirmed but they are dead you have uh, 2185 killed and wounded on ukrainian side again this is the whole brigade wiped off the order of battle from ukraine and this is we have seven tanks 23 armored vehicles artillery and mortars 18 so that is a what the russians call glorious hunt and then of course mr matvichuk and he's a very famous real military professional he's the colonel he's talking about this uh, yesterday here in the central media in russia that uh, the armed forces of ukraine and the kursk region use american tactics absolutely agree this is what it is they still believe that in 2022 they somehow won what they called the Kharkov battle while well, in reality Russians were withdrawing on their own volition there because they saw no reason to defend essentially open field and they were doing this using maneuver uh, uh, maneuverable or maneuver uh, defense and they lost some armor obviously which is absolutely normal during war but they still think now evidently in Pentagon and let alone London that they somehow won it they won nothing they just they returned uh, some uh, you know empty spaces there and so what he says that the main feature of the battles with the armed forces of Ukraine in the Korsk region is the use of reconnaissance and combat tactics by the enemy, mili uh, enemy military expert retired Colonel Anatoly Matvichuk told Lenta.ru he explained uh, that this complicates the confrontation with the armed forces of Ukraine exactly disperse they love you know this you know uh, blitzkrieg tactics but the units that broke through to our territory switched to the mode of reconnaissance and combat activities this is a purely american tactics small groups go out on the routes conduct reconnaissance if necessary combat operations trying to find vulnerabilities uh, matvichuk said and this is exactly what it is then they suddenly try to you know move those uh, resources in whatever the gap the weakness they find find the problem of course they are not dealing with the iraqi forces and as you can see yourself today and a bunch of the actually additional villages and hamlets have been liberated all over the place and yeah it was expected it is so predictable they are as i already stated one trick ponies and uh when you have those one trick ponies what do you expect so and um the question obviously now that uh is United States as they try to pretend uh, somehow uh, not inv involved in, in this uh, you know um, whole situation so what well, <clears throat> the problem is of course uh, they, they are you know they are and uh, what can I say even the mod modus operandi of the mainstream media in the United States obviously uh, tells you about it but you can see yourself that Mr. Patrushev and Patrushev is a big big honcho he is a, if Mr. Medvedev is the alter ego of Mr. Putin then Mr. Patrushev is, is his great cardinal he is personal aide to Mr. Putin and Patrushev announced the participation of NATO in the West and the planning of the operation of the armed for Forces of Ukraine near Kursk. Yes, it has all hallmarks of the amateurish planning, trying to find the empty space. Like, for example, it was in Kursk uh, Oblast where Mr. Smirnov, the uh, the guy who stamp for governor, he failed to do what was uh, proper in terms of the of, uh, you know uh, doing the uh, even light cover of the what is called security zone or for a for a field. So and yeah, they run in there and as was expected. As I already stated, they ran into the wall around Suja, and that was it. That was the extent. They could have been have mitigated this extent, uh, uh, you know, much more if they would have thought about it. But that's the uh, issue for already people from uh, administration of president and probably even FSB trying to figure out what the hell was uh, happening uh, and where those money which have been sent there to erect those necessary uh, defensive lines go. There is a lot of what is going on now in Kursk area in this respect. So, but uh, Mr. Patrushev, who obviously you know, former uh, uh, intel person, he talks about that U.S. statements about non-involvement in the operation which is currently being carried out by the armed forces of Ukraine, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> in the Kursk region are not true. Nikolai Patrushev, assistant to the president of the Russian Federation, chairman of the Marine Board, he is an extremely important man, man for the development of Russian Navy, announced, and <coughs> everybody understands this, <coughs> 
the only thing is of course United States tries to hide behind the uh, backs of this you know uh, unlucky swords who are being uh, obliterated in the industrial quantities right now in the Kursk area and uh, uh, even if that hasn't been enough my god we have now the freaking circus and this is um, you know Karl Marx stated that uh, you know what history repeats itself first as a tragedy then as a farce we are now probably third fourth if not fifth iteration of this farce because guess what even Wall Street Journal uh, starts to write and you know what your, your jaw dropped to the floor look at this <clears throat> So the Wall Street Journal tells you two days ago that actually it was a drunken evening, a rented yacht, the real story of the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage. Private businessmen funded the shoestring operation, which was overseen by a top general. President Zelensky approved the plan, then tried unsuccessfully to call it off. And of course, they say that CIA also tried to call it off. But oh my God, they couldn't do anything they, as much as they tried and tried to prevent this. But those, you know, drunken businessman for three hundred thousand dollars they went out and just blew up the Nord Stream we have this clown so from Germany I, I don't know if Germany produced any anybody's but anybody but clowns no well guess what if Ukraine wasn't enough to be involved in blowing up the Nord Stream Poland probably involved in Nord Stream blast ex-German spy master says Poland was likely involved in the underwater explosions that ruptured the Nord Stream underwater gas pipeline pipeline in Baltic Sea in some temperature 2022 the former president of germany's foreign intelligence agency has claimed august henning also alleged that warsaw has intentionally obstructed Berlin's investigation into the incident this is i mean wow so well why this mayhem why this circus it's it's a comedy it's shakespearean in its scale well simple as that um, uh, those people who obviously uh, you when you die for the 80 meters you need to have the helium really also that means you have to have specialized you know equipment and usually it's a serious diver ships you know vessels they are pretty significant they have all required uh, actually equipment including the uh, you know uh, camera chambers you know the pressurized chambers where you have to go th through well what do I know about it but yeah so and uh, this whole I mean pathetic thing is as my friend Larry Johnson stated they are preparing to basically eject Zelensky yeah we understand this but do not forget uh, blowing up of the Nord Stream 2 is the act of the international terrorism and then suddenly when you know after they blew out this up and they expected Russia to collapse they of course that would go unnoticed and the United States would after that completely you know subjugate which already did Germany is uh, it, it's not even a country anymore so and um, the problem was of course Russia decided to stay in the game and actually beat the crap out of NATO and so suddenly what are you gonna do with this case yeah the German investigation it's uh, it's it's a joke really so suddenly you have the charge and which will, will be brought up into the international courts of the international terrorism who is going to be responsible well the United States doesn't want to be responsible for this but you understand then suddenly Putin's regime dictator, dictatorial regime uh, didn't fall in fact it's, it's doing uh, better than any time anyway throughout its existence and so that means that these charges will be leveled and they will not be leveled just against ukraine poland i i don't know poland will get it you know they don't understand that they are also you know basically well you know, low level card you know that will be thrown into the gutter you know if need be but uh the question is uh that um uh, Everybody knows that this is United States. It's like you have to be a complete retard not to understand that the United States is responsible for this and there were uh, American and NATO assets participating in this. So, and now the game of washing hands and, you know, trying to also eject Zelensky started. And you can see all signs of it. Those are all hallmarks of the American political game because this is what they do and in Washington because they cannot do anything else. They cannot fight war they cannot plan operation proper operations so well it is what it is my friends and then it's um 
how to put it uh, it's really i mean same old one trick ponies as you can see yourself they tried again uh today for, for four times it was closed obviously due to the missile uh, uh, threat so but it's all over now the traffic resumed and air defense forces repelled the ukrainian strike with the takams missiles on the crimean bridge so yeah ukraine tried to attack the crimean bridge with american attackams missiles uh, and air defense systems tonight repelled a group strike by 12 attackams operational tactical missiles produced by the united states on the crimean bridge all missiles all 12 of them have been destroyed the bridge is now fully back to into operation and the uh, traffic is moving on unobstructed so and this is just to uh, well tell you essentially uh, uh, what is going on with this whole ooh, grand strategic thing you know just let's you know run in Kursk and let's create this you know uh, situation of the PR war this is the only thing they do it's PR so let's attack Crimean bridge okay they attacked it repelled and so it's same old same old no matter what they do it's all repelled killed and then they end up with a much worse situation so anybody who thinks that Russia will negotiate now I have a bridge to sell you really and it's not only this there is a uh, other situation with uh, how to put it politely i am on record and uh, you know i browse obviously media so here is the what it's called the uh Queen's institute for the responsible uh, uh state mission you know the responsible politics and when you look at uh what those people uh try to preach in terms of their um weapons production and again make no mistake uh this is uh, mike friedenburg uh, uh, responsible statecraft as is, is basically the yet another think tank yet another sinecure where they uh, basically uh, regurgitate the same type of the uh people who have been around in washington for a long time and see uh, here we have the guy and he he actually uh, has the engineering background he uh, has the bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering so, so he allegedly supposed to have understanding of the numbers but he does not and look at this these guys publish yet another garbage which they don't understand they do not learn them look at this why russia is far outpacing us NATO in weapons production and the guy suddenly says that look what numbers he's uh, using Indeed, Russia is out producing all of NATO and U.S. in terms of ammunition, rockets, and tanks, despite having in 2023 defense budget of just 100 billion and GDP of 2 trillion. You cannot fix stupid. They still using nominal U.S. dollar express GDP numbers and budget. They do not understand this guy who writes this, and for some reason they regurgitate the same thing. I remember Andrew Bashevich who runs this whole show saying that, "Hey, eh, yeah, Russians are kind of mediocre army." Really, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. So, and yeah, you would expect the, the for the graduate of the West Point and the guy who was uh, whatever Vietnam and something learned something. No. They learn nothing. They continue to use, you know, the, and regurgitate the same false numbers. And what can I say? Yeah, actually, Russia is the fourth economy in the world, probably on its way to becoming the third. And the hundred billion budget is not the uh, real budget. If you would really adjust it for the real situation in terms of what Russia does in, in terms of, uh, you know, spending money and especially how it's spends money apart from the fact that russia gets much more bang for its buck not to mention the fact that producing much better weapons the reality is compared to american budget in the american numbers it will be somewhere around 400 billion at least but yeah what can i say the guy is you know he still thinks that he is you know yeah. here's his background max Frindenburg, yeah bachelor of science bs mechanical bachelor of science mechanical engineering then he goes into the uh, master of business uh, production operations management yeah it's respectable profession but after that why dude you should have a good uh, mathematical apparatus to understand what is going on there you have to be able to handle numbers but he does not and he continues to write and base himself on this fi fiction
the fiction of American economy, the fiction of the budgets, the fiction of the US dollar, which is now, well, how to put it politely, is, uh, yeah, being de-dollarized, okay? So, and uh, this is the whole situation with what was expected it to be. That was the final result. After once uh, three, four days of the media hype and BS, uh, you know, basically uh, spread by the all kinds of media, including Russian media. So it's over and then suddenly the picture is clear and like, uh oh, yeah. So, and well, what can I say? I think Sumy will become a Russian city at some point of time and fairly soon. But there is no Russian doing this. And then we'll see what is going to happen uh, on the rest of the Taretsk area, which is, of course, Russians advancing there every day now in kilometers. And the other places there in Kharkov uh, or, uh, district uh, or oblast. So, and this is what I wanted to tell you today, guys, for Friday, because if I would go with what I have at my hand right now, it would take an hour and a half of commentaries uh, non-stop from talking from me so but i do not want to you know um exploit your attention anymore and this is uh, what i want to kind of finish it off today uh, and uh, what i can as always those who like what i do guys please subscribe to my channel and those who can afford please support me on patreon or buy me a coffee and two and um what can i say have a nice weekend and i'll be talking to you later guys bye bye